Shane, you had one job to do. Watch yeah. a 38 minute show. I did. You I did. Seven days to do it. And then you come back and you tell us about it. Charles, Shane is still on, on the November YouTube page. He hasn't gotten past that. <laughs> I caught up a lot. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Five Idiots Talking Toys. Uh, it's a Sunday night podcast where we focus on vintage Star Wars collections and the hobby of, of buying and selling and trading vintage Star Wars. Uh, all five of the idiots are here tonight. Brandon's here, Chris, Charles, and John. How are you guys doing? We're going to kind of talk about what we have planned for this upcoming spring. We're very excited. Um, we've been excited with our channel please like this video and subscribe to the channel to join us weekly if you hit that bell icon you'll be notified of new videos which we do have a lot more of lately uh there's a lot of short videos three four five seven minutes uh that will come out during the week uh john's been hitting us with the with the repro roundup to go over the differences between authentic and reproduction accessories for the vintage uh, Star Wars figures and uh, the rest of us have all, you know, been uh, contributing some other uh, helpful educational videos as well. Christopher's going through the whole line right now. Guys, what's up tonight? Uh, thanks very much for another fun night of hanging out, I hope. Yeah, good to see everybody. Um, I'm back from the, I guess, death's door with COVID. Uh, wasn't, wasn't too bad, but uh, had, had, I didn't go to school at all last week because uh, I tested positive on Tuesday, a Monday, I think, Monday. I tested positive, and then we had a winter event on Tuesday, and then I was just out the rest of the week. So feeling much better now, ready to get back in the game. Well, that's good, and you probably benefited from some of the new rules, right? You didn't have to wait the whole 10 or 10-plus 10 days. Yeah, it was, uh, it was five days from, um, I guess, symptoms when they yeah. start showing symptoms but i think you know you know not to get too far into the weeds with the covid talk but i think that the five days is too short honestly because i think that's how i got it because we had a couple of other teachers who had covid too and they were only out the five days and they were all on my hall yeah so well i'll know. tell you we we they made that announcement literally on like day 11 for us over in my house or day 12 or something like that and we were still not feeling well by then like so we still felt like we had a cold so Everybody's different, but I'm glad you're feeling better. Yeah. Um, so, so guys, we've been having some fun. We did a giveaway recently, uh, and I think our, our regular listeners have uh, seen that video. Uh, Todd was our winner. So uh, Charles shipped out that Boba Fett, that graded Boba Fett to Todd. So we were very excited about that. He was excited. So that was a fun giveaway for reaching 1,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel. If you're listening to us on, on Spotify, on any other uh, podcast platform, uh, we appreciate you. Thank you very much. But also come over and subscribe to our YouTube channel because we have a lot of stuff that we put on the screen. Um, we go over weapons. We go over accessories. We show graded stuff. So come over and see the collectibles. Uh, that's a lot of fun as well. And we have a lot more videos to watch on our YouTube channel than we do on the podcast. The podcast apps, we generally keep these full episodes like this one, but we have a lot of other content as well on YouTube. Uh, Charles, what's going on? Um, I know you shipped that out to Todd. We had some fun with that giveaway. And and now we're up to over 850 people on Rogue Five Toys. So that's been, uh, that's been kind of fun too. Yeah, it has. What I'm uh, ready for is another giveaway. We got to give something else away. Yeah, I'm with you. I was I was uh, thinking that too. I'd love to to get you know to a thousand uh, members in uh, in Rogue Five Toys, where we have a lot of fun on a daily basis. We we get here uh, and talk all talk once a week, but uh, we're interactive on that on that page every day. So we definitely want to do a giveaway there. Uh, Christopher, what do you have to say for yourself? I think we should do a giveaway when we hit a thousand people. Um, let's, let's start planning what we want to give away, whether it's a mock or another graded piece or something, but I think a thousand people is a good, uh, a good number that I want to hit also. 
Yeah, yeah, I think so. And we just to remind everybody, we're on Facebook as well for this podcast. So if you go to five idiots talking toys.com, it will get you right there, or you can search for us on Facebook. Follow us there as well because we put up a lot of uh fun stuff there. We we link to the videos, we we put up some uh some memes and some uh links to some educational stuff as well. Um well, also the five of us are gonna be doing a show. Uh, at the end of April, beginning of May, at the ICCC show in Nashville. So the five of us will be together. We will be doing sales at a convention. We hopefully will be doing the podcast at nighttime. So whoever is there attending, maybe we can do a nice live one and get some guests on. That would be fun. Yeah, that would be great. Uh, I, I, I know we're all looking forward to that. Uh, somebody actually asked us in the group uh, just yesterday if we're going to be at the show, and we are. We're going to have three tables. We're going to be vendors at the show, really mostly just for fun, just to just to be able to meet a lot of people that we regularly talk with or have reached out to us since we started the podcast. So we'll be there with collectibles. We'll be hanging out in the room. Uh, in the great room with all the vendors and we definitely will be recording a lot. Hopefully we'll do some, we'll get some nice clips uh, throughout the, the whole weekend. So we'll definitely yeah, we're see everybody there. We're, we are definitely going to be going to some room sales. Oh yeah. So yeah. Not only we have room sales, but we're going to be drinking in the room sales also. <laughs> I'll tell you, I'm going to tell a little inside, a little background behind the scenes uh, info. Chris is super excited that we're vending at the show because then he can go to the, the room sales in other people's rooms and not have any strangers in his room. He's super <laughs> excited about that. Yeah, I'm sorry, but the idea of strangers walking into my room and picking stuff up off my bed, it doesn't get me excited <laughs> I want to sleep in that bed at night. So <laughs> I will go to your room, but I don't want anyone coming in my room. Yes, yes. So we're going to have all of our stuff spread on tables during the day, and we're going to be in your room drinking at night. So get ready. And Brendan's going to be in there invading your room with his million candle flashlight. Yeah, this this is going to be Brandon. Uh, <laughs> Brandon's here with us now. He is in his limousine. Uh, his family is out for uh, an extravagant night around the San Diego area. Brandon, how are you tonight? Good. I'm almost home. Uh, man, a few words. Uh, John, so anyway. Uh... <laughs> I'm going to what Brandon usually says. Hey, it's Brandon from Sunnyside, San Diego. How are you doing? Yeah, Chris was very obsessed this past week with a clip that he found in one of our shows where Brandon, his claim is that Brandon is super sexy in it. <laughs> he did. He actually sounded very sexy in that clip. There was a clip where I said, and so Brandon, how are you doing? How's the weather by you? Well, let me tell you, Shane, it is fantastic here in Southern California. How are you doing? <laughs> So, so back to, uh, yeah, so back to the convention. Uh, I personally don't, you know, do conventions throughout the year. I mean, it's tough right now with the two years of COVID that we have. There aren't nearly as many as there used to be. I think once uh, that cloud kind of lifts, I'd, I'd definitely be interested in traveling to other spots in the country and see what some other shows look like. But we are going to all be in Nashville in April. We're looking forward to, we're looking forward to meeting a lot of people. Um, That's what's going to make this show like good is because, the five of us are together every week on the podcast, but we're actually going to be together in person. And the last time we all hung out was last year at the show. So it's been a year since we've all been together. So you can bet. Yeah, it's really crazy. You live like five minutes away from your brother and you haven't seen him since Nashville. Um, <laughs> exactly. It'll be nice to get back together with him again. <laughs> well, what would you do uh, when your brother sells your Star Wars collection for $50? <laughs> yeah, or when he gets in a collection of a hundred mocks and you just want to like peek, like open a flap and peek, and he literally kicks you out of your house and tells you to leave the facility. Yeah, I'm getting any fingerprints on them. <laughs> Charles doesn't like mocks. Everybody knows that. I'm not a huge fan of mocks, but the second he is finished selling these, the uh, sun's going to come out because it's enough already. They're on every second, they're all over. Just slapping every Facebook site. 
I know I can't sell anything because everybody's wanting those mocks. No, no, I dare you to try to sell something on Rogue Five Toys because it'll be immediately drowned out by the latest six posts of Chris Chris's mocks. <laughs> <laughs> just change active. Just keeping it active. Oh, that's your main goal. Just keeping keeping things flowing. You have to right. make sure that every day there's something for sale. You need people to come every day because once they start tuning out, then forget about it. No, and, and I'll tell you, you know, on a serious note, uh, you know, we've had a bunch of episodes where we've talked about mocks and it's, you know, some collectors like them, some don't. Uh, man, it's been absolute fire. Am I right? I mean, you're you're uh, putting up some of these these items for sale. And I mean, in under a minute, I've seen some of them sell. I mean, it's, whoever the people that are interested in them are really interested in them. So people are people are actually like PMing me and thinking that I'm giving them a heads up before I list because the how fast they're selling and I'm actually not people were just literally refreshing all day waiting for me to do listings and when they saw it like they knew what they wanted and then they were just claiming within minutes I don't even think they even read the like the uh, d description they just claimed it it was it was so odd how fast it went yeah you're reminding me of something that I always stop myself like if you're ever on like you know ebay or mercari or you know any site where there's there's stuff for sale like i'll see something and i'll jump to go buy it and i have to stop myself like on the submit button and say you know jerk you got to go back and at least read the description because god forbid it's something there's something weird that you totally don't realize but that's kind of what you're making me think of is that you're so it's like fomo you're so nervous that you're going to miss out on claiming it that you don't even care what it is sometimes yeah. and it's crazy. I got I gotta tell you, I was really appreciative how fast everything went. I got to keep like ten to myself, ten of them that I really wanted that I'm gonna be sending into CIS for grading. So I got those. Some of them I already had, so you know, I got I got rid of those, but it was just it was really it was humbling to see how fast they went. Like it was it was good. Yeah, that's that's great. Uh and and so so you, we can certainly follow up with you in uh, seven to ten months when you get those back from CAS. We can do a show where you uh, you show us what grades you got and everything. Uh, but it, it was it was fun to see them on the page. It was fun to see. You know, I don't have any mocks like you. I mean, I don't have. I have a few Jedi. You know, mocks. I don't have any Empire or twelve backs or twenty one backs. And so it was really fun to see your video showing all those and then to see those go up and see all the activity and, and people jumping on those. So uh, Don, I think you agree. Uh, it was fun to see all those go up. I know you have uh, a lot of empire cards or you've had those go through, you know, your collection, uh, but it's fun to see those old ones. Shane. Yeah. 15 years from now, there won't be a mock in the world. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be card backs with broken bubbles and loose figures. How long can that glue actually last? I mean, like, realistically, how long can it really last? Well, it's been 40 years. It's been 45 years, and they're still holding, you know, so. Are they holding? <laughs> All of them aren't. Look back here. Look, don't you see them holding right there? They're, you know, none of them fell down yet. Well, maybe if we zoom in on one or two of them, they won't be attached anymore. Oh, God. <laughs> Why are you so negative about everything? I wanna, remember, do, you, do you remember recently when we named him Sour Sour Susan or Sa Negative Sour Nancy? Nancy? Negative. No one else has that name. That's not I, me anymore. Sour <laughs> Sally. Shane uh, renamed that to Mister John. Yeah. Well, when it comes to the book of Boba Fett, for sure. Oh yeah, but 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 even you've been outdone now. Like you were sour sour Susie about Book of Boba, like really by the first episode recap. But here, you know, now we're, you know, four episodes in. And and after the third episode, I thought Chris was going to break his his phone screen during that recap. I and mean, he was so upset. Never watching an episode again. He hates it. Disney should go to hell. You know, like what was he? What else was he saying? I'm going to save it all for the uh, five minute, five minute recap. Let's just put it that way. All right. All right. Well, you, you, you're, you're sour Susie in the realm of Book of Boba Fett episodes, but uh, he's nice and peachy in this episode. I'm, I'm just glad that I was able to put out some good mocks for sale. Hopefully everyone was happy. 
Um, like I said, we're going to be doing a show with all five of us together. Hopefully, we could do a live podcast one night, and we can get some like live guests going into the room sales too, because that that would be great. The people who are back home who don't get to go, they can see what a room sale actually is. People don't even know like you know what a room sale is. It's literally toys laid out all over the guy's bed, and you're just picking plastic toys. <laughs> everywhere. It's kind of you know it's weird, but it's yeah, good. It is. It is, and I'll tell you. I mean, I was thrown into the you know the fire, so to speak. Last April, when I met you guys, I had never been to anything more than a very small local toy show. I'd never been to a convention and uh, certainly not in a hotel. And so when people are telling me, you know, I got there early on Thursday night, the show starts on Friday. And so I was excited to just kind of relax and, and get there and get settled into my room. People are telling me about room sales and I'm, I'm like, OK, so I start, you know, this was still early in the afternoon. I start walking around the hotel because they're like, oh, yeah, go walk around. And people are like, or even setting up like at their doorway, you know, a table outside and then more stuff in the room. I was like super creeped out because I was like, I don't want to go into people's rooms. Like they're <laughs> laying toys on their bed and like, you know, but you very quickly kind of just wake up and go, oh, okay, so, this is the way it goes. Most the of first, you, the first one that know. I saw, I walked in and you know that picture of Burt Reynolds where he's laying there on the bed where, with no clothes on? <laughs> It was like that, but the guy had some mocks in front of his crotch, and we're like, <laughs> I was just trying to look, and we're like, hey, you know, this this Han Solo has some hair on it. Well, <laughs> I remember I this story, Brandon, and, and you walked in, and you were like, I think I'm going to leave, but before I go, is that a 21 back, or? That was the room that when oh. we went in, we closed the door on Brandon, and he came back out like 20 minutes later. <laughs> no, this is this is uh, before I met you guys. I, I don't know. It was uh, I was hoping it was the boba offer uh, card, but it, it wasn't. It was the hair offer. No, it was, it was the uh, it was the wasn't it the free the free Nian Num offer? <laughs> yeah, that's not worth staying in behind a closed door for. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, what are you guys gonna bring? I'm bringing play sets. And loose figures and uh, vehicles, stuff that's not yeah. stuff that's too hard to ship. <laughs> so I actually have I have four huge boxes of vehicles, play sets, and creatures. Stuff that's just so hard to sell because shipping is like forty bucks, and it just like it's I don't even have boxes to have the stuff. So I'm I left I've actually left the stuff in the box. And I'm bringing all that stuff there because it's easier to buy just like in person, especially if you go there and you're driving in a car, you can just buy it and then you don't have to worry about shipping. Yeah. And I'm also bringing, um, I'm bringing some modern Joes um, and some other modern figures. And, um, you know, I think with Rogue Five, even though it's all toys, there seems to be a niche for just Star Wars. Um, and you know, I understand that that's, that's the most popular line and everything, but, uh, but I'm bringing, you know, a bunch of modern stuff that's not star Wars as well. I'm bringing whatever fits in a suitcase. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, that's, that's the difference. And, and just to remind folks, I mean, we're all kind of in different parts of the, the country. Uh, it's, it goes both ways, depending on how each of us is traveling there, you know, will affect what we can bring. And, and you're going to have a whole mixed bag when you get there. I knew I flew there last year and flew home, and I had to fit whatever I bought in a suitcase. Uh, you're going to have folks there that drove and can buy anything, and they're going to have folks that can't buy play sets. So uh, it's going to be a mix both ways. Well, last year, I know Brandon actually slept on the street. There was like a park bench down the block. That's what, actually where he slept, so he wasn't able to really store anything. He had yeah. to leave it in our room. Yeah, I had to for Waffle House, and uh, we're like, what hotel are you staying at? And he goes, just pick me up down here. <laughs> he saved uh, $6.93 a night if he stayed four miles away. The, in the, a place, the place that I stayed in was probably $30-something dollars a night, and I, I, re I still regret it. <laughs> what was it, the uh, Roach Rooftop? <laughs> yeah, John wanted to pick him up for a Waffle House breakfast, and he was like, all right, just go down the street. There's a shell station. If you drive around back, there's a there's a bathroom. I'll I'll be waiting there. <laughs> he's so he's so embarrassed. I mean, 
You were just talking about a Han Solo on hair, and then you're like, uh, yeah, I stayed at some $30 room. Now, <laughs> hey, I don't remember. Hey, if I, so I think you were by yourself. If I, if I buy or if I stay at a cheap hotel, that's more money I can spend on a hairy mock. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, when I was planning my trip last year, there's that hotel that's immediately across the street. And it was, you know, it was like 25, 30 percent less. And I'm like, well, I can just stay at the hotel across the street. And then somehow I was trying to, you know, figure out if that was made sense. And there's apparently like a big like stream or, or gap there. Like you can't just walk across like you have to. It's all the whole thing. And so I asked around and people were like, listen, if you're going to the convention, there's room sales, there's the bar, there's hanging out, like just stay at the hotel. And it was expensive. Like, you know, John did the same thing. John had his own room. I mean, it, it was like 800 bucks for the hotel. Like, you know, we're, we're all going to, you know, kind of split rooms this year, uh, which makes a lot more sense, you know, for us guys that know each other now. But it's not what, cheap. What's the plan for this year? I know me and Charles are staying in a room together. What yeah, you guys the, have bunk beds, is that correct? Yes, we. so Charles and I have bunk beds, and Brandon's sleeping right in the middle. <laughs> yeah, I think we're – and then in our room, we have a uh, a queen-size bed uh, that John and Brandon are going to share, and then I have a twin bed that's in a separate room attached. <laughs> I'm going to have a separate bed for activities, you know, <laughs> for, the, <laughs> for the room sales, depending on what we're selling. So are, are you guys sharing a room? Who's sharing a room? We three are, aren't we? I Shane, think we are. Brandon. I think I think Brandon yeah. says he wants to sleep in the bathtub. I, he kind of didn't I don't care. care. <laughs> I'm big spoon. Whatever, whatever situation there is. I'm bringing I'm a portable spoon. hammock. I'll be sleeping in the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be the same design as his banana hammock. He wants to be matchy matchy. Are you going to uh, tell from your room or no? No. Room sales? Yeah. No. No. And and John did do uh like I, I think like a short one night no. room sale. No, we did a live, last year. A live sale. Well, yeah, we no, did John, I did buy a couple of things in John like that John had in uh in a short room sale like the first night, right? Yeah, I did have a room sale the first night. This, um, like I did better in the lobby sale than Change everything a, he bought. Everything. This this oh, is a this is a John Walden room sale special right here. So come on, how much? Come on. Uh, I believe it was 60, 50, 60, something 50 like that. Fifty or sixty, something like that. Yeah, whatever it was, I had never seen one in person. I was just happy to have it. Of course, though, I'm I'm the idiot who bought this when I had to bring everything home in a suitcase. I mean, <laughs> could you imagine? <laughs> so, <laughs> I had us leave it in our room. This is some leftovers from last year, so I figured I'd drop it off to him, you know, like yeah, next year. <laughs> and you know what? I, I have a, I have a couple of things. I was just reorganizing some of my shelves so I could take some pictures of the Leia Bosch collection for uh, for figure of the week. I kind of missed it already, but I had been putting it off. But uh, I came across the Leia Bosch I bought from Chris at the sale. I still have it in a bag. He says, fr from Chris, ICCC. Um, so I found some cool stuff tonight on my shelves that, that reminded me, I have patches that I bought, um, that were from the show with Leia on it. So it's just fun memories. I'm really excited to go back. I'm excited to meet a lot of the people that we've, you know, told within the group that we're going to be there that are looking forward to coming and hanging out for a bit. We're going to be out and about too. There's going to be all five of us are going to be at the table. So we're going to be taking turns, walking around, checking out the other stuff. We'll be there Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, just going to be a great time. Uh, so we'll we'll see some of you guys uh, all around the hotel at the bar. We're going to do a, a night in the city. I think we'll we'll bump into people everywhere, but it's going to be a fun time. And hopefully, we have some merchandise also to uh, give out and sell some T-shirts, maybe some stickers, pins, whatever. Yeah, hats. Yeah, and I think I think you guys are right. I think we're going to be walking around each of us. You know, uh, taking some video of the room of the. Uh, you know, the droids and the, you know, the cosplay and the fun stuff that's around in the other uh, areas of the show. And uh, we'll have some great footage to share with everybody who doesn't get a chance to make it. And uh, we'll be doing some interviews around and we'll put together some episodes and, and maybe we'll go live there. So it'll be fun. John, what would you like to do at the show? Like, what kind of ideas do you have um, 
you know, now with the podcast, now with the tables, what would you like to do uh, that you didn't get to do last year or do different? Uh, well, de definitely this year. I want to meet some people that uh, are, you know, fans of the show or whatever. Um, there's really nothing on my list to, to shop for necessarily. But um, I, I definitely, you know, uh, nothing really different than I did last year. Um, but I do want to, you know, meet some new vendors and, and, you know, talk to them and see and uh, look at their stuff and um, just interact with people and meet new people. Um, so that's, you know, mainly just meeting people. Yeah. And that was some of the most fun that we part, you know, the, the part that was the most fun last year was getting to meet you guys, of course, and getting to meet a lot of people that we're now friends with. Uh, within the groups. So, um, basically, so basically, John wants to meet other men. <laughs> <laughs> well, he had so much success meeting four other men last year, you know, that maybe he can repeat that. <laughs> <laughs> he lure, he lures everybody in with breakfast at the Waffle House. <laughs> That's right. So this next year, it's going to be him, him and two men. The year after, maybe it's him and three men. The year after... Like five years from now, it's gonna be him and like nine men in one room. <laughs> Ten idiots talking toys. <laughs> <laughs>